and Dr. Uh, Carlos Vale Jr. is is actually here in the terminal and the uh, conference room. A uh, new advisory board member from District Eight. So we do we do have a quorum, no? Yes, we do have a quorum. Yeah, so this I will be without a schedule. I ate my sandwich really quick before starting just <laughs> and had breakfast. <laughs> I've been on I've been on been in three meetings. This is my fourth. <laughs> I think with all the web it just they get so oh you have two two minutes before that last meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're just uh, wait on Ashley here real quick and get going. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, just testing it out for the topic. Though. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think if we, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think we have a quorum. We can probably get going. They have a quorum. You know what? Uh, it's not TV agenda, so I didn't print it out. So, uh, but just to get started, uh. Of memory and Ashley, yeah. If, if Ashley, if you want, can you share uh, the agenda on your screen? So, yeah, please, that would, that would help me quite a bit. Yes, well, okay. Just... It's March 10th. Get this meeting call to order at uh, let me see what time I have on my phone 12 03. It's like we have a quorum, so call the order at 1203, March 10th. Okay, we guess we start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. Do you have the flag in there? <laughs> Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I guess Ashley will start off next with a uh, roll call. All right, just for housekeeping, if I can ask everyone who's in the meeting, if you're not speaking, if you can please mute your phones or, or the computer, if you're on the computer. And then when you need to speak, you can definitely unmute yourself. Okay. Um, Adrian Trevino. George Narvaez. Okay. Uh, Omar Gonzalez Longoria. Jose Angel Lopez. Arturo Tomas Benavides, uh, Elizabeth Alonso Villarreal, present. Robert Jacob Gilpin, Jose D. Gonzalez, present. And Dr. Carlos Valle Jr. Here. Okay, we have a quorum of five. Okay, great. Okay, uh, do we have uh, a motion to move forward with the uh, absences on the, uh, um, the roll call? Mr. Chairman, just uh, FYI, today starts the new um, the new ordinance for the advisory board. So, uh, I mean, you're more than welcome to to do the excuses, but it, it won't. It doesn't have an effect for moving forward. So, this would be their first of four missed meetings um which would result in a member being not on the board so uh that ordinance is in place now i, I just wanted you to have the context for that if maybe you make the motion if you like but it will uh, unlike with past sessions it won't excuse it okay fair enough so this will start off with the first the first portion for the next the next cycle then myself um, okay. ashley could you pull up the first page on the agenda just the top up to so JD can follow through. Okay. Perfect. There you go. I think we're at minutes. Okay. So Jeff, just to get get on cue right now, I don't have to motion. We don't have to get a motion for the roll call. We just move forward to the minutes. In. 
Yeah, uh, because it no longer, uh, whether excused, unexcused, um, it, it still counts as an absence. So, uh, I mean, like I said, if, you, if you'd like to have something just for your own documentation on record, but it won't, uh, it won't affect them not being here anyway. We will be at a, their first of four absences. Fair enough. For the sake of time, let's just move forward then, you know? Okay, so uh, I guess next thing that minutes, has everybody had a chance to review the, the previous minutes for the regular schedule meeting on February 10th? If so, hello? Hello? Uh, sorry, this is Tom Benavides. I've called in a little bit late, but I, I think I finally made it into the meeting. Thanks, Tom. Actually, I'm sorry about that. Here. Can you make sure you count Tom present? Yes, he's been as he's been marked as present. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, do I, do I have a motion to approve the minutes for the, the February tenth meeting? Motion. Any Okay, it's Liz. Okay, second. It's at the past motion from the last meeting, right? From the February 10th meeting, yes. Our last meeting, yes, correct. Yeah, I got you. Is that George? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Okay, motion passes to approve the minutes. All right, citizens' comments. Um, if any citizen would like to make any uh, comments, they're more than welcome to pull out any um, uh, the witness cards and submit them. Um, the information is presented here on the on the agenda. So, uh, with that being said, let's move forward to the staff reports. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. Ask that on the screen if you can go to the uh, passenger report. The first thing. Thank you. Uh, so the passenger report, we're starting the year off kind of what we're seeing as a national trend uh, about where we have been uh, or roughly about 50% of passengers from uh, a normal year. So 2020 obviously wasn't a full normal year, but uh, the general national airspace system still about 50% of where we um, anticipate normally to be. Uh, there have been some good signs with, with travel this spring break. Uh, load factors are, are looking good. CDC guidance is still not to travel unless um, needed, unless it's uh, essential. Uh, but there are no restrictions for domestic travel. We are starting our Aeromar flight back up on Friday, uh, which hits the target date that we were looking for for the restart of that service. So that will be uh, two times a week for the month of March to Mexico City, then going back to three times a week, April 13th. Uh, so we are seeing more positive numbers, um, especially as the vaccine starts to roll out. So I know everybody is tracking that for their own industries and what they're doing, but it's the same here in aviation. Um, the more that the vaccine is available, the better, more confident people will feel in, in traveling. So um, Ashley, if you can move forward to the next report. Yeah, sure. If you may, before yeah. you go. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yes. I just, it, with the information you just said in regards to the uh, flights to Mexico, uh, we were advised today in an earlier meeting with uh, the airline with Aromar that as a promotional right now, they're not having any change fees in case you do have to go to Mexico or people coming in from Mexico to the U.S. Um, if there is changes that you need to make in your itinerary, that they will not make uh, any additional fees for those changes for your tickets. And in addition, normally they would be uh, a, if there is a, a change in ticket price, because now you're, uh, say, changing the date to a, a, a latter date, um, they will honor your original ticket uh, price. So there will be uh, no additional fees. And that applies to both people coming in from Mexico or uh, people from Laredo flying into Mexico City or other parts of the, the country. I just want to make uh, uh, inform the board about that. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Elsie. Uh, um, yeah, Ashley, we can move to the next report, the cargo. Oh, it's already up. Never mind. Uh, so uh, we see that we started the year strong, which is great. It's indicative, I think, to where we were ending 2020 going on into 2021 with an 82% difference in cargo uh, for the month of January. 
which is, I think, really great. Uh, once again, you know, automotive still being that driving force in that sector, but uh, it's it's indicative and hopefully it still tracks into uh, 2021 as we continue on throughout the year. But I think as we see with the automotive industry, uh, things are really moving right now. So uh, it's a good sign there. Um, if you can move forward, Ashley, to the next report. So at the Federal Inspection Station, um, you know, our numbers are still showing strong, as you can see here. Um, the SAT operations office is reflecting pretty high uh, for the month, but the number relative is still right, six to five. But the total cargo operations uh, were showing a strong increase, which is in relation to what we're seeing within the cargo report. So uh, once again, a, new, a good positive sign as we continue into 2021. Uh, next report, Ashley. Um, same here, Sean, reflective total passenger numbers, 52, 57.82% up uh, as we go into this new year, uh, following in line with, with the cargo activity. So seeing positive numbers uh, on the west side, which we, you know, is, is representative to what we saw through 2020, right? Cargo, general aviation started to continue up after we hit that low point in the beginning of the summer, spring, summer. Um, our passenger traffic, as with the first report, kind of collectively still down around 52%, but this is actually meeting and beating what we're seeing in the industry as far as cargo activity at airports. So I think we're doing really strong in that category, along with general aviation. Let me go to the next report, Ashley. And then 195% of total FIS operations up for this year, uh, still showing. And uh, Ashley, if you can move to the next report. Fuel flowage fees. Uh, what we're seeing here uh, is indicative to the change in, in cargo operations, right? More aircraft, more fuel. Uh, so seeing those higher percentage rates for January as well. So that's uh, another really good positive sign. Uh, starting the year off right. And kind of the moral of the story is, you know, we're, we're working with the passenger traffic confidence they're getting people back in planes, but um, the airport is definitely doing well currently with cargo and with general aviation. Uh, next report. The uh, delinquency report, uh, Elsie, I defer to you on this if there's anything in particular you want to talk about with the delinquency report. I know it's been being more reduced down. We're seeing about close, I think, to the same number we were sitting last month, around 28,000. Yes, we've been working with the different um, stakeholders, different tenants, um, just to make sure that we have all of the accounts brought up to date. A lot of them um, have shifted, especially in the uh, aviation, have shifted um, positions more to operations rather than administrative um, in the logistics chain. So we're working with them to see uh, if there's any miss on letters or communication. But I think we've been seeing a, a, a good uh, reduction in, in delinquencies and and like I said, uh, the economic relief plan that was established by the board and city council for COVID has helped the tenants um, to get back on their feet as well. And so we did receive additional funding um, for concessions uh, recently by FAA. Uh, we just got the award yesterday or so. Um, it's in city managers, but we're looking to utilize some of those funding for PPEs but um, and safety and additional cleaning of, of the terminal, but also um, with the car rental concessions. Uh, a, a small portion of that grant was uh, allocated for those efforts. So I think we'll be able to uh, help um, during this time that we're seeing less passengers. And I have a question if I may, on the, on the GSA, um, um, is there any way to con I, I mean, I know that there's shift in personnel or whatever, but you can you take it to the upper level, another upper upper level? In, yes, in we're we're account? reviewing the account to make sure that there's no um, maybe adjustments that might have been missed or or a change in their contract that would have affected this, and then all uh, reviewing with their accounting uh, department to make sure that um, any necessary payments that are due are made as quickly as possible. Yes. Well, well, I'll go ahead and talk to them, um, to their real estate division at a higher level. And I, and I, 
I do see the uh, question by uh, Board Member um, Omar Gonzalez, and I, I don't see that being a problem. He asked in the chat, can we include the 2019 on the report so we can have a better comparison? Uh, 2020 with COVID will not give us the same point of comparison. And I think um, Elsie or, or Ashley, we have data, I think, available. So I think next month that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, sure, not a problem. And then maybe if we could move forward uh, to the construction report with Alejandro Labrada. Uh, yes, good morning, everybody, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the, the status report of the reconstruction of the cargo apron uh, phase 14, um, we are about 4%. Uh, you know what happened with the freeze and, and everything that we were delayed. We couldn't do anything on those. We lost two weeks. And uh, about, I'm glad to inform that today we put out, it was our first uh, country report this morning. We put 300 cubic yards. And the project now is moving along with a nice weather. So uh, right now it's about four percent, and we're, we're we're still within schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, I believe that is the end of the staff reports. Uh, was there something further you'd like to to talk about? Just to bring up, I know that um, the numbers are still real low. I just want to see how far there's going to be any investment in reference to the, um, the fire station there. Um, you have, what's that, 10 or 6? And um, is there investment in reference to uh, acquiring additional uh, entities like other than the five original? Yeah, you know, I know I, I, I sound like a broken record when I had this conversation about the FIS. Um, we actually, uh, Elsie and myself, were on a conversation yesterday with some individuals that are working within the SAP program. They did just go through and change numerous staff members. And Elsie, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's the board director for this region is, is now new. Is that correct? Um, and so, oh, I believe uh, we have uh, the Mexican um, offices in Nuevo Laredo, uh, Colonel Raimundo Bautista. Um, it's in, in reviewing the different programs that are already part of Laredo, Nuevo Laredo. And um, we'll be, we're looking at scheduling a visit with him to be able to discuss the program specific to the airport. Um, but it, the efforts don't, don't stop. Uh, we have been in discussions with different stakeholders like uh, the airlines to see what uh, possibilities or opportunities are there. Uh, we do have request by two airlines uh, that are very much in line to offering scheduled service um, that I think will complement the efforts um, that are already available or the services that are available by uh, the joint inspection program. But as, as you may know, JD, um, it, there is uh, several updates that are needed and, and really needs to be in, in, in a partnership with the city, uh, really led by the industry, uh, because these are changes that really needs to be made, not so much by us uh, in the airport or the city, but it's really by the Mexican government. Um, and just like any other program, it, it, it doesn't hurt to review uh, projects every so many years to see how they can be uh, more efficient. And I think this is one of those projects that it, it needs to be reassessed, uh, hopefully by the Mexican government in, in, in ways that will complement the logistics that is carried out here in Laredo. Thank you, Kelsey, and Jeff, appreciate that. But the only thing I guess, my question comes on basically on the heels of a comment you just made in reference to there's a change of not only just administration, but the poor director on the Mexican side. And every time there's a new change, hopefully they can kind of get in their ear and kind of sit there, kind of push an advancement because I think it would benefit the smaller packaging. Maybe, you know, what's up then? I know I don't like to talk about it too much, but you know, the Amazon is what's that BTC border, uh, what's that, uh, it's a business to a consumer, especially on the Mexican side, since they're trying to import on the small, on the smaller, on a smaller scale instead of just BTV, business to business, you know, so just, uh, just an observation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, Mr. Chairman, when you get into the, the action items too, you'll see some of the progress uh, as well that we're making with the private sector, which very much complement what we're doing here. Cause I agree exactly with your thoughts. I know, uh, Ms. Forkstead has hit the ground running when it comes to, having those conversations with the, the new board director of New Laredo. She said, hopefully uh, we'll get the meeting here um, soon and we can, you know, continue that. But I think having the private sector to Elsie's point is, is critical, uh, you know, because having them there 
really drives the message home of this is a successful operation and using it with those entities. So uh, we're moving on on all on all faucets, but I'm sure when you look at the action items and some of the stuff we'll talk about here in a minute, um, I think that will very much complement what we're doing here with the SAP program. And if you may uh, allow me, Jeff, to let them know uh, the board, um, it unofficially um, there has been continuous talks with um, the different entities here in the airport, uh, CBP, TSA, um, and our new air carrier, uh, Aeromat, who has been, as you know, um, having the route to Mexico City for passengers. Um, the conversation has also now geared towards having small packages uh, on a scheduled basis through Aeromat. And so um, we're hopeful that in the next couple of days, they will be conducting a pilot program to see the logistics of what that would undertake. And um, the discussions look very promising. And if everything goes uh, accordingly, um, if very soon the airline should be able to make an official announcement as to being able to provide that layer of service to the different um, stakeholders in, in this area to be able to send out uh, cargo on those flights. But as you can imagine, it's not pallets full of merchandise. It's mostly geared towards um, small packages and uh, and, and small uh, smaller containers uh, just because of the size of the aircraft is more geared towards, uh, the ATR is geared more towards passengers. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fair enough, thanks, appreciate that. And Mr. Chairman, I believe that is the end of our uh, staff reports. Great, thank you, Jeffrey. Um, I guess we'll move forward. Uh, um, I guess if there's no other questions, to the action items? Okay, Mr. Chairman. So number one is to consider a recommendation to mayor and city council to authorize the city manager to execute a master developer agreement between the city of Laredo and Aviation Facilities Company Management, LLC, AFCO, to develop and manage seven parcels at the Laredo International Airport, which I believe in this, uh, there's a correction, Elsie, I don't believe it's seven. Yeah, yeah, it's in the screen and I apologize, uh, we had a typo, it's, it's four parcels, not seven parcels. So four parcels, this is the same, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we had brought to the advisory board and city council several months ago, uh, the same group with had former mayor and HUD secretary Henry Cisneros' group uh, that was approved by the airport advisory board and also city council to enter into negotiations with AFCO uh, to develop these four parcels of property um, on airport property, which we talked about before really geared towards cargo development. As you can see here, parcel F, parcel D, parcel C, and parcel A. So these, these properties here are what we're looking to fully develop into really geared towards cargo operations. Um, I do know we have a representative on the line as well uh, from AFCO, Steve Four. If, if Steve, if you'd like to say anything, uh, can we have your board? Sure. Thank you, Jeff. And good morning or early afternoon to everyone. I'm Steve Four. I'm the Chief Investment Officer with AFCO. We've been working with Jeff, Elsie, and your external advisors and council now for the last few weeks. The agreement is 99%, if not 100% completed. Um, as Jeff said, it is focused on parcels A, C, D, and F, particularly in the case of D and F, we will focus on air cargo, logistics, and distribution uses there. And I would just um, echo Elsie's comments in terms of the passenger carrier route development for small, higher value, time sensitive packages. Uh, we think that will be a real complement to Laredo and we look forward to working with Jeff and his team to drive additional demand for air cargo, both the smaller e-commerce type shipments and, and belly shipments that Elsie referred to in passenger aircraft, as well as full-blown freighters that hopefully Elsie will get to the point where we have large pallets of cargo in and out on a regular basis. But we're feeling pretty good about where we are transactionally. And we look forward to working with the city as well as the airport over the next couple of years to bring our vision again on E or rather F and D to fruition. Those are going to be the first parcels we focus on because we think they're immediately available for development into air cargo and logistics uses. 
Thanks, Jeff. I'm happy to answer any questions, but I appreciate you giving me a few minutes to update the the team on uh, AFCO's view on, on where we are and um, where I think we're going. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate it. Are there any questions for Mr. Four from AFCO or, or the item in general? I have a question. These uh, parcels, are these area that have been developed a specific reason uh, uh, other than AFCO? Um, specific reason uh, you mean for development or, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, for, for development. Uh, well, I, and I might be kind of confusing the question, but we had an RFP out uh, for development that was open to you know the general public. When we went back, we we put together a committee for selection of what those RFPs came in as. I think with AFCO in particular, their timeline, their investment into the facility, and really looking at our airport layout plan. You know, these these parcels here are aeronautical based in, in, in the general sense for the most part of it. Um, and so we really wanted to have an aeronautical component when we come to development. AFCO, world renowned company, um, you know, they have large players, they're at large airports. I think this very much complements what we're trying to do here in Laredo to leverage our strategic geographical location. So uh, there are many factors that, that went into the development. Uh, when I think at the end of the day, we had six or so proposals on, on, on these, these pieces of property, but AFCO definitely knocked it out of the park when it came to what they plan to do and timeline to do it. And I apologize if I kind of misconstrued the question there, but uh, hopefully that covered part of it. Yeah, Mr. Nakis, the, the RFPs, um, when we went out, we took it back uh, to the board and back in October of 20, uh, uh, October 19, 2020, it was approved by city council for selecting uh, AFCO as one of the developers, one of two. And now what we're doing is we're bringing back the contract for that selection. Okay, I understand, thank you. Thank you. So basically the city council uh, went ahead and approved and selected, right? Yeah, and so did, uh, it's just a formality of, of getting the contract going and. Yeah, and, and so did the advisory board uh, vice chair. Um, it, it came to both vice, uh, to the advisory board and the city council. So this, and at the same time, I know it was a while back now, but both APCO and 270 were selected uh, for the development of the property. And 270 will be bringing to the advisory board uh, once that deal is to the same point that we are with APCO. But you're absolutely right. This is more formality because it has already been approved by uh, the airport advisory board and city council. And now to Elson's point, we're just bringing back the actual contract for approval. How long is the contract for? I think we're sitting at roughly about 40 years in total length. If, if I'm correct on that, right, Elsie, which is standard for aviation uh, development. Um, you don't want to go really beyond the 40 years, but 40 years is, is a typical line for this type of investment. And if you look towards, you know, the full RFP package, you're, you're talking around 100 million of probably private investment into the facilities, which means, you know, cross dock facilities, hangar, ramp space, uh, really providing for the that job component here in Laredo. So. I think overall, there's a really good story for everybody on, on the board, for the airport, and for the community. And would AFCO be uh, presenting, like, a, I don't know, from time to time, a report back, you know, annual report, something, you know, keep keep the airport in the loop of... Oh, the yeah. No, and, and, and to your point, Vice Chair, we actually, we are working with them as a partner. So um, it is not our intention at all to just drop the property and say, okay, it's over. <laughs> Yeah, it's in your hands now. And we, you know, they definitely the experts, they bring that to the table, but we want to work hand in hand with them. Um, this agreement here, the approval of this will really allow us to start doing that cohesive relationship. So even beyond a year, I would see maybe at least with us as staff, you know, especially if there's milestones that we're making a monthly update on these board meetings of what we're doing. Uh, but we're planning, you know, once we get past COVID, we can all start getting back into these conferences to be at the table with AFCO as a partner. Uh, working with them to develop these properties. And and Steve, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. But no, I, I would just echo that as well. A key element of our proposal was to collaborate with the airport and its outreach, whether it's routes, jumpstart, the various industry events that go on around the world. As Laredo is seeking additional passenger carriers and cargo carriers in particularly, 
um, we, we want to be there. So it's not as though this will be done and in three or four years you'll see a building and in eight or nine years you'll see another building. Uh, I would think semi-annually I will be presenting to the extent Jeff and others are interested in some kind of a formal update and then certainly monthly um, Jeff's team and your outside advisors are going to be well aware of what we're doing because we're going to be doing it um, collaboratively. Okay. Well, so, there's no further questions, or there's any additional questions. Uh, I need a motion for to approve this last item. No motion. Motion to approve. <laughs> Liz, thanks, Liz. <laughs> a second. I'll be quiet out there. I knew it, Liz. Does, does the committee need more information, or does the board need more information? No. Remember, your your microphones are on mute. So if you need to, you need to press the unmute button in the bottom. Yeah. Maybe you can put the agenda, up. can you put the agenda item on the screen so we can maybe have a chance to, to look at it there. And I don't know for housekeeping issues too, um, Dr. I thought maybe I heard Dr. Layla Jr. You said you're new to this, but you might a second. I think I might have. Uh, I've, I read this last night and, and uh, the uh, AFCO gentleman that allows me to second it. Uh, okay. Okay. If you don't mind. Okay. I'm sorry, Doctor. What's your Carlos? Doctor Carlos. Okay. Sorry about that. No, I said it's trying to try to try to remember my name and uh, yeah, move forward. Uh, you know, thanks. And then this brings up a good point. Uh, the only thing is, I would make a recommendation is uh, prior to uh, moving forward with this is just to make sure that the amendment is made. To, uh, from to seven to four as previously stated. Yeah. Um, just uh, uh, if so, if Liz, would you like to make the motion with the with the adjustment? Just a recommendation on that. Looks like maybe the vice chair is is off screen at the moment. But yes, to your point, uh, Mr. Chairman, we would we would uh, we do that with City Council as we did with this. I think two months ago we had a mistake, but we would rectify that before. It's already if you see it on the screen, it's already been uh, corrected. But yes, uh, still reflects so, seven here. So, but I know this, this. I saw you getting on, getting off. I don't know if you're popping in and on, but I don't. I'm sorry, I had to take a call. What? What? I heard my name. Yeah, just a question because I know that you made the motion, but uh, just for the sake of since the information was posted incorrectly, if you were to adjust your motion just to make sure that it would a correction made from seven to four, I think that it would I would I would feel more comfortable with that. I amend I amend the motion to reflect the uh, the change of four parcels. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank and the city it. council has already approved the the selection. The selection, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. So with that, with that being said, just as long as um, that that is noted, um, is there um, all all uh, four in favor? Say aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposition? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Four, so, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Okay, Mr. Chairman, so for the next uh, several items, I'll go through each one of them, but they are all around the same. They're for extending uh, the leases on the fuel farm. So I'll start with number two. Uh, consider recommendation to mayor and city council to authorize the city manager to execute an amendment to lease agreement between the city of Laredo as lessor and Barker Aeromotive as lessee, approved by ordinance number 200259 dated October 23rd, 2000, as amended by ordinance number 2008-0240, dated December 1st, 2008, amending section 1.03, leases premises, 
to increase by 4,500.24 square feet for a total of 7,029.24 square feet track of land located in block number one at the Laredo International Airport. The new monthly rent shall be $916.57 in addition to amend the lease term to extend for an additional two years to the end of July 31st, 2032. All other terms and conditions remain unchanged and in effect. And I see that, I don't know if Elsie stepped out, but this is Barker Aeromotive. Uh, they're adding to their food farm um, and it's just, it's more fuel for the facility. I think it's good. Elsie, I, I see that you're back now. Did you want to add anything to Barker and their plans here? Yeah, I think uh, I wanted to explain uh, the one, two, three, four. The four items that we have right now are basically for all of the fuel farm. Uh, we have been working uh, the federal projects on the ramp, which is that dotted line that you see on the screen. All along that edge, we've been uh, working for rehabilitation of the area. So uh, we've been trying to improve the conditions as well on the fuel farm to that extent. So it's mostly to square off the, the lease premises. So what we did is with Barker, um, they've uh, advised us that they need additional land. So they, uh, which is the blue square next to the red square on the right hand side, um, on the top, Ashley. Uh, there. Uh, so if you see, you have Barker on the light blue, um, uh, south of that uh, rectangle, they wish to install additional fuel tanks uh, because the activity is it's quite high right now. Uh, both FPOs have advice us that they need to install new fuel tanks uh, in order to accommodate that increase in activity. And so Barker, the first item is related to that is to add uh, additional square footage. Um, also signature, uh, which is item um, number four, would be to also increase the item, which is in orange, to allow for that section that's bacon in the center to install also fuel tanks. And then IBC, um, we have uh, repositioned their equipment. Uh, which is what you see next to the fuel farm, uh, next to the ramp, and that that what you see like a white a white stick um, coming off of the square of the rectangle. I'm sorry, that one has been repositioned downwards to the uh, um, which will now square off, and we decrease some of the least areas. And so that's basically what we're doing is we're making improvements throughout the whole fuel farm. We added additional lighting. Uh, we're working with the FBOs to reposition um, some of the elect elect electrical um, components that are in there to allow for better operations and, and then just more modernization of the operation as a whole. That's all I have. A lot of information, Elsie. Yeah. It looks like it's they're expanding because they need more fuel, so in, in a nutshell. So, I mean, it, that, that sounds like a positive aspect, you know. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else uh, the board would like to hear or any additional information that can be provided. I will say, too, I'll just add in that with this, um, to Elsie's point about us, uh, some modernizing in there. I know Alejandro's been working closely with that. Fuel farms obviously are very heavily regulated. I'm, I'm, everybody can understand that from the FAA side, EPA. But this also includes a lot of improvements that we've done in there to the electrical, to the wiring with AEP. So um, it's not only are we, to your point, Mr. Chairman, that it's adding uh, capacity to the airport, which is always good, uh, but it's making it a safer fuel environment. And to Elsie's point, better lighting, uh, better, you know, retainage of areas. So uh, it's it's good all around. Can we get the agenda back on the screen, please? And this is all going to be done by Bark. I'm oh, no, sorry, the new monthly rent. Bark will be doing the uh, improvements, or will it be the uh, 
be Walker important. will be doing all the improvements on the property. The property is currently vacant, asses, raw land, and so they will be uh, making a substantial investment to be able to build uh, the containing base and then also installation of all the equipment and the fuel tanks, um, which will be around one to two uh, 20,000 gallon fuel tanks. So they weren't, were, okay, so there's nothing there right now, that, so there wasn't a lease right now. So there is a lease, they're adding a square footage to the existing lease to be able to bring in additional fuel tanks. To place them, to exactly. construct or to, to accommodate yeah. them. Right. It's what, are they pay, what are they paying right now for their whole lease? So it's a it, so for them it's a it's about uh, let's see here how many it's it's around three hundred hold on one second sorry got my sheets out of order it's, it's they're paying right now three hundred and thirty one dollars and fifty one cents which is around four thousand dollars a year um, so right now this will bringing up to around eleven thousand a little bit under eleven thousand um, an annual rent. Okay, so is this for their big location? For so Marker? Yeah. For their building? No, no, this is the fuel farm. Okay, I'm like... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, this is for... for a, let, a me so, let me want a neighbor works office there. <laughs> no, this is specific for fuel activity. This is... Oh, okay. Only, it's only a small piece of land so they can put on top it, uh, the fuel tank, not the hangar. This is the hangars in a totally separate area. And so, and so I, I'm assuming you went by the appraised value that you all use, right? Yes. For this type of uh, for uh, activities, activities. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, any additional questions? Anybody require additional information? If not, I'd like to have a motion to um, approve this action item. To make a motion. Is that George? Yes, sir. Okay. A second? Second. Yes. Outstanding. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Any opposition? All right, action item two um, is, uh, is approved. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Number three, uh, to what Elsie spoke about before, I know we went through each one of these, so as we go through, it's just kind of the same. It's just those areas, whether uh, signature or um, IBC, I know Elsie touched on that. So I, if I may, Jeff, I, yeah. I can go through it. It's basically in regards to IBC, Again, it's for the fuel farm, not the hangers. It's only for the fuel farm to allow for squaring off of the, the property because we changed equipment from one side of the fuel farm to another side. Uh, basically, we are reducing the lease the premises so that way we can have it more towards, uh, to give us more ramp space uh, and safety areas. So we're reducing their square footage by 121 square feet. Uh, we're also, uh, they elected to participate in the economic uh, relief plan. And so we negotiated for additional years on their contract to match that of their FBO uh, license agreement. So this would include two periods of five year extensions each uh, for a end term of September 30th, 2035 which again will match up and line them up with their lease with their hangar uh, instead of having individual terms. So, and then this will also add, because we're adding new uh, years on the plan or on the lease agreement, we're also adding um, a, uh, a section on the agreement to allow for fair market appraisal values at the subsequent extension terms. And just for Thank housekeeping, you. I haven't read the item yet, so I'll read it now, then go to questions if there's questions. Uh, consider a recommendation to mayor and city council to authorize the city manager to execute an amendment to lease agreement between the city of Laredo as lessor and International Bank of Commerce as lessee, approved by ordinance 2015-0146, dated October 5th, 2015, 
amending section 1.03, description of premise D demise to delete 0 0.0028 acres, 121 square feet of land on the lease premise for a new total of 0 0.1154 acres, 5,029 square feet. The new monthly rent shall be $811.64. In addition, amending section 1.05 term of leasehold by extending the lease term for an additional two year periods of five years to the end of September 30th, 2030 and September 30th, 2035 and section 1.06 titled rental obligation and mode of payment by adding adjustment of rental value based on appraised fair market value of the lease premises on an anniversary date of 2021 and 2026. All other terms and conditions remain unchanged and in effect. Besides the market, the the mark, the appraised fair market value at those anniversary dates, do do they get like a CPI increase every year? Yes, they do. They do. Okay. And what is our current uh, monthly rent right now? Oh, they're they, decreasing, right? Yes, this one they're decreasing. It's by a few cents, really, because it's 121 square feet. Jeff, just to take consideration, I, I'm, I'm reading the other the other two, um, actually line four and five, and they're basically the same other than dates. Um, can we lump all three together for a second time because I see we're down at about 10 minutes? Yeah, I, I, I can read them all. I, I think we would just need a motion from you, Mr. Chairman, and then approval, and then I can just read the two in conjunction with one another, and, or take three, four, maybe a motion to take three, four, five. I've already read three, and then I'll just read four, five, but I would need a motion and approval from you to do that. Okay, fair enough. And the reason why I say that everything everything's related to action item um, number two. So I'd like to have a motion just, just for the sake of time and just to add the discussions on the on the uh, the square footage. It looks like that's that's what something is changing, reducing, or or so forth. So would anybody like to make a motion? So many. Okay, second. Second. All right. George. Okay, George. Okay, go ahead, uh, Mr. Let's go, let's go forward to uh, okay. Jeff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll read both uh, now. Consider a recommendation to Mayor and City Council authorize the city of to authorize the city manager to execute an amendment to lease agreement between the city of Laredo as lessor and Signature Flight Support LLC as lessee, approved by Ordinance 950158, dated August 7th, 1995 by amending section 1.03, description of premise demise to increase 4,500 square feet to 9,088.5 square feet track of land located at the Laredo International Airport. The new monthly rent shall be $1,462.65. All other terms and conditions remain unchanged and in effect. Number five, Mr. Chairman, is to Consider a recommendation to manager and city council to authorize the city manager to execute an amendment to lease agreement between the city of Laredo as lessor and signature flight support LLC as lessee approved by ordinance number 20080241 dated December 1st, 2008 as amended by ordinance 2011. Wait, I'm sorry, I missed my spot here. <laughs> Approved by ordinance number 20080241 dated December 1st, 2008, as amended by ordinance 20110147 dated November 7th, 2011, to amend section 1.03, description of premise demise to de decrease from 9,882 square feet to 8,079 square feet tract of land located in block number one at the Laredo International Airport. The new monthly rent shall be $1,060.73. All other terms and conditions remain unchanged and in effect. And Elsie, um, I think it's the same here. I'm not sure if you're still there, but um, these two, I believe, are both increases as well. And the only decrease was then on number three, where um, it was uh, a decrease for IBC Bank. Uh, but the terms and conditions, like you said, at the end there are, are staying besides uh, these two items. It would be a CPI and then annual um, 
or appraisal value adjustment. So the IBC was a decrease and signature flight is an increase? Correct. Oh, yes. Wait, no, it says to decrease from 9882 to 8000. So that's a decrease also, signature flight? Uh, yeah, so they have an increase, and, but a decrease on, on one section. So number four is an increase and number five is, is a decrease. So they're adding fuel in another section and I don't, um, Ashley, can you find where Elsie is so she can talk to this? If uh, I'm not sure if she's stepped out. I'm standby. I know she's been working on each one of these with them, so I don't want to say something incorrect. And so basically all these are for fuel 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 activity right um, yeah predominantly uh jet a um jet uh fuel and fuel storage for those facilities um nothing with 100 low light which is a smaller aircraft but to what we've seen in the previous reports about uh our fuel farms uh and fuel activity going up it's just to add predominantly more storage what we see with ibc bank um with the new ramp space Elsie uh, pointed to, she said that long item, it's the apparatus that's for the fueling. That just shifted to the south, um, which before it was a safety concern. So IBC in general, they're not adding any fuel storage, uh, but their apparatus for refueling vehicles has shifted. So that's where we see the decrease there. And then um, Signature is, is adding a fuel farm location. I just wanted to give a little bit more picture. This is what it was previous with signature, the red. And that's what that, that's the one that we're decreasing. So if you can see here where we have um where we have the aircraft parked there, uh Ms. Like the chair, that's what is the safety concern we were talking about with IBC Bank where if it was parked on the ramp and it was around flight activities and fueling by us shifting that apparatus to the south there where you can see where the other fuel farms are lined up. Now their refueling of the, the station itself into the trucks takes place on the road system rather than out on the ramp. And that was where the decrease I see. And I see Elsie's back. I think Elsie, the, the main question right now is the increase and the decrease with the signature from item four to item five. And I think overall signature is adding space, adding volume, but I think the vice chair just had a question about the decrease and the increase with signature. Yes, uh, again, uh, thank you. It was for safety concerns and also compliance with FAA in regards to uh, grant assurances. So as you, uh, some of you may already know, uh, grant assurances are because the ramps are public use space and um, we cannot lease those areas uh, and, and then have aircraft in such proximity to, to those areas that are leased. So now, Uh, worked with the different equipment that they utilize. So now it provides for, I think, additional safety components and modernization that we were looking for as an airport. Okay. So we recommend. And staff, and staff is recommending approval of all these. You all have done your, your research and all that. Exactly. Okay. All right. Well, I make a motion to approve if nobody else has any questions. Uh, looks like it's a benefit to the city because it's actually an adjustment based on one um, factor that's um, item number two. So will this take that motion into consideration? Do you have a second? Can I make a motion? That would be George. Looks like there's going to be an easy agenda going all down. George and Liz all the way down. So, um, all in favor? I try not to. Uh, I try to let uh, everybody else. Uh, <laughs> well, basically everything is self-explanatory and they're just adding or deleting uh, property. Uh, so it's just basically just uh, What's your name? Yeah. I'm taking George. I'm sorry. I'm having difficulty hearing. Um, uh, if you could put on mute, please, for housekeeping. Um, Sorry about that. that yeah, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anybody, anybody, um, um, vote against? With that being said, I guess it's all, all three motions, action item um, three, four, and five um, pass. So. 
Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That is the end of our action items for today. Outstanding. I guess um, we have requests coming up next, and I guess we take consideration. I think it was already answered, but in reference to what Omar said, just to please include uh, the fiscal year night or uh, fiscal year nineteen as well, because due to the fact that fiscal year twenty was kind of a unique year, yeah. uh, so we can kind of get our numbers in a in a, in, a, in perspective. Yep. Any other uh, requests? Yeah, if you're going to say something, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just say absolutely thank you. And, and I, I know, Mr. Chairman, you had brought this up earlier. Uh, just to say a welcome thank to uh, Dr. Carlos Vail Jr. Uh, from District 8. I think this is his first meeting. So I know you, you had, had brought that up. So I just wanted to, to say also for me to welcome to your first Airport Advisory Board meeting. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> you're right, Dr. I, I, my apologies on that. I sit there trying to follow my notes and I was at the end, but very welcome. And I, I know we're doing Zoom. Sometimes we try to show up, but I know there's there some protocols that were taken into consideration a couple of months back. So, um, very welcome. If you want to do either, I don't know how the, it's being handled. Hopefully, real soon we can have a in, in person meeting because sometimes it is kind of challenging. And I know the biggest challenge that I've been in all my meetings is the mute thing. So, um, but other than that, uh, it's welcome, Doctor. Would you like to say in, in comments? Uh, I've learned a lot today. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just wanted to thank everybody. I know it's been very challenging working through um, a, a web meeting. And um, thank you, everyone, for adjusting to those changes. Um, I, I know we were one of the first uh, committees and boards in the city to con has made. and she helps us a lot in making sure that all the packages are on board and sharing the screens and and she's been uh, learning you know we've all been learning right and and and, and this changes but um, she's been able to help us through it all so I appreciate that and and you know if any at any time Jeff is, is always available, but Ashley is, is a very good point of contact to make sure and help you navigate if you continue having any questions or any issues uh, connecting uh, for meetings. Nelsie, if I may add, you know, taking into consideration the amount of money, the grants that have been approved during this time frame as well has been quite considerable. And uh, I know you guys have been uh, uh, been uh, promoted and also been um, offered many kudos from the congressman and several individuals throughout the city. Congratulations for a job well done to all the staff. Thank you. Well, with that being said, and there's nothing else. That's George. All right. Second. Yes. <laughs> The faithful too. So thanks for being here at this meeting. I really do appreciate that. And you guys have a wonderful day. Appreciate it. Likewise. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. Mm -hmm.